Boxing King Media in partnership with Box Row. We've got the main man, the main man, Willie Hutchinson. I'm back, back, Anna. Back in the gym, day one. Yeah. I caught you. Yeah, 100%. Back in the gym. Christmas, everything's all over. Um, and we're back, aren't we? We're back with a bang. I'm looking forward to boxing again. Obviously, you look like you put a little bit of weight on. Mm. Has Christmas been kind to you? 100% it's been too kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too kind, it's been too kind. But listen, it's something I needed as well. Do you know what I mean? Just a little yeah. bit of time away. When with the family, spend a bit of time back at home, but now I'm recharged and ready to rock and roll. Um, yeah. Willie, it's been, I think, is it well over a year since you know since you lost? Close to a year, probably March mm, last year. March. March, March last March, year. Yeah. Can't remember the date, but it was March, yeah. Obviously, you've not fought, and most fans would have expected a guy with your talent, maybe two yeah. or three months down the line, Frank Warren brings you back against another guy, but you just mm, managed. So, Tell us Yeah, what, COVID. got what, COVID twice. Been? Okay. Uh, I was very, very bad with COVID. I had stuff going on in the backgrounds of, of my own life and stuff happening with my family and stuff like that. And I just needed a bit of time, you know what I mean? I needed to regenerate and now I've got nothing going on, no stress, no thing, and I'm back in Sheffield. I'm ready to, I'm ready to charge on. I, I hate to start with the negative, but we're going to have to talk about it because mm. I know you haven't done many interviews since... It's since the first since, one since my fight. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, Lennox Clark. Yeah. Talk to me. What what went wrong in your opinion? Uh, what went wrong in my opinion? Uh, there's a lots of things, man. Do you know what I mean? Listen, a lot of things was going on at the time, and I'm not a person to make excuses. You know what I mean? And to be fair, yeah, if we're gonna go look at it, I got beat fair and square, and it is what it is. But things going on behind boxing and just stuff that, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd rather not talk about. But yeah, and now that there's just got to put that behind me, and please God, uh, we can get a rematch. Yeah, as soon as possible. You, you know, when fighters always say, you know, them sort of things, that stuff's going on behind the scenes, because you imagine yeah. fans are thinking straight away, shit, let's start Googling it. Yeah, what what went wrong in his personal life? Yeah. Obviously, I, I don't want to intrude on your personal life, but is there anything that you think you could share that so people can I'd understand? I'd rather not, to be honest with you. All right, okay. <laughs> too much. <laughs> too much happens. Okay, yeah. and how difficult has you know, the last year been for you? And apart from the COVID, it's, dealing with that loss, because obviously coming from the amateur background and the amount of skills and talent yeah, people yeah. have been talking about you for a yeah. long time. I'm a killer, aren't I? Yeah. I'm a killer. The, um, well, for me, 23 years, at how old I'm 23, and for the 23 years, last year was the hardest year of my whole entire life. Um, there wasn't many ups, to be fair. We had, there was happy times, but I was, it's, to be honest with you, probably it was only a few weeks ago is where I was the lowest of my whole entire life. I've never felt as low in my life. Um, and I've, I've, I've risen back up and, you know what I mean? And I know what I can do, with like boxing wise, I know what I can do and it's just putting it all to work now and now I'm back happy in myself, you know what I mean? You know when you, you just get into a rut and you can't get out of it and I feel like I was in a dark place, but no one's fault, it was mine. I just put myself in a place where I didn't really want to be and I was doing, you know what I mean? Was it on the backdrop of that loss or was it? On no, the... was st no. that loss was nothing compared to what I've been through and I swear. In the past 12 months, the things that's happened behind in my, in my immediate family, mm -hmm. that loss I couldn't care less. I never, I haven't even thought of when I got beat of my fight to be honest, because I've had that much going on. Right. Um, and then what was the turning point in a way you thought, you know what, fuck this, I'm going to sort this shit out, get back in the gym and sort things my out? My turning point was probably... My turning point, if you're one of the gods and the truth, was probably on Monday morning. Wow. This Monday. And I was staying at home, obviously, at my mum and dad's and stuff, and all my family, all my aunties, uncles, and everyone, just there for Christmas. And I woke up on Monday, and I went into my mum's. I went out, my dad was away at work, and my mum and, and my brothers and sisters and all that, saying, so, Shally. And just talking to him, whatever. And I don't know, I don't know, to be honest with you, I said, I just sat and I thought, what, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? What, where, where's my life heading now? Where am, I, where am I going? And on Monday morning, I didn't pack my bags. I didn't pack nothing. I had the clothes that's on my back, put my coat on. I gave my mum a cuddle and told her I was going to the gym where I'm from in Lanark. And I jumped in my car with no diesel in it. I got all my money and I drove away and I come to Sheffield. And I rang John Ingle and I said, listen, I'm coming back. And I rung him and they put me in a place and now me and that was a monday to be honest mad crazy <laughs> <laughs>
So you know, in, in that time, as as have you considered like retirement? You know, it's, it's no, so never, never it retirement. No, it hasn't got to that point. Mm. But I tell you what, it has. It's never really been more retirement. It's more just sitting back and just put. I never really, really thought on my boxing to be honest with you, because I just had so much going on. You know mm. what I mean? And then yeah. when all that got sorted, it's like I put myself in a bit of a dark place. You know what I mean? Mm. And just not in a good place for myself mentally. Um, and I could, it was like I couldn't get out. It was like I couldn't breathe. And I was go- just a very, very dark place, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It was the lowest I've ever felt. And what should a 23-year-old be low about, to be honest, should I? What should low should it be? I'm unbelievable, I'm handsome. There's nothing really I ain't really got, is there? So, fight like fuck. And I can fight unbelievable, look at me. You know what I mean? What should I be depressed about? But it happens. It does. And it gets to you, but it depends. It's where you're going to be and where where I am and where I'm going to be. It's two different stories. I'm going to be king of the world at one day. Give me a few years and I'm going to be the king of the world. That's what people's not forgetting. It's about the journey. not the, Sorry, it's about the destination, not the journey. That's it. I'm sure that... I'm sure no, it is. Brendan it is. said that, I think. Well, um, I don't really know, but it's 100% facts because yeah. I tell you... I'm going to be in a lot better position from a year from now. Let's talk a year from now and see where we are. And you know, in that time, has there been certain people that have helped you? Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I can loads, imagine man. you've had friends, family, loads, people boxing. Family, my mum and dad and me, uh, me, all my family has, but my mum my and dad and my granny and my brothers and sisters and just all my family. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been hard, man. It's been very hard. Has there been any contact from Frank Warren or his team, obviously? He just speaks to my manager, Charlie Finkel. Okay. He speaks to Shelley and he just does all that side of it. Are you still with Frank Warren Promotions? Yeah, Frank Warren and Richard Schaefer. And what's the plan going forward? And have they been in contact? Uh, to be honest with you, they haven't been in contact at all. Um, obviously, Shelley, I'm in contact with him every every couple of days. Talk to Shelley every couple of days. Um, but Frank Warren, and that no, not yet. Just the just getting back into things, and then they're gonna hopefully something big. Uh, with regards to the names you mentioned, Shelley Finkel, Schaefer, uh, Frank, there's three people that all three do kind of similar things apart mm. from Shelley, obviously, he manages. How have you ended up with three advisors? Um, I can fight for fun, can I? You know what I mean? This, this is the top and bottom of all of it. So I can fight for fun and I'm not too bad looking. All right, okay. So, <laughs> so well, obviously, you need to get back in the gym, you need to get fit. You know, have you given yourself a target? Uh, I've given myself a little target, just mm. take my time this week and then start killing it next week. Start pushing on. Okay. Lose a bit of Christmas fat. Um, and then start becoming the man I am. And your old gym buddy, Liam Williams, obviously he's reached and left the Ingalls. That's right, I, I, yeah. I interviewed him and, because uh, I always like to get different opinions from different fighters, whether they're in gyms or, or mm. in different gyms. And I think one of the words he used is he felt like he was getting stale. So obviously you've been here for a long time, you know, it's yeah. people know the history of this gym. Do you want to know here now it's more like family, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, and to be honest with you, I think it would be very, very hard for me to go somewhere else because mm. when I come here, I'm the most happiest I am when I come mm. in this gym. Because I've been in loads of gyms, you know what I mean? And it's when I come in here, I'm happy. This is the place I'm, I'm happy. And there's a true saying that the grass, what you think is greener, the other side isn't really greener. Mm. It isn't. There's no secret portion. There's no thing. See, when my dad goes to work, he needs a shovel, a rake, and a, t- and a, a whacker to do a job. You don't need the special thing. You don't need the special portion. You just need to the normal stuff we need to do and eat clean, and, and you either can fight or you can't, and it's as simple as that. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, obviously following this that never been at the other side. I saw people putting comments up about, about This the is the best so trainer and this is the best trainer, isn't it? Yeah, so it's good for you to obviously say that so people can see it's not the same. Everyone's not feeling the same, so, that, that, so that's no. good. Talking to Liam's fight, how do you think that's going to go? I Without, think, be neutral about it if you can. Yeah, I will, I will. And listen, me and Liam's very, very close. And listen, yeah. it's not an easy fight for him, is it? It's far from an easy fight. But he's got more than capable of beating him, let me tell you. I'm more than capable of beating him. It just if he's on his game, like how he was when he were here, I think he'll. I think I truly do think he'll knock him out in nine to ten rounds. In okay. the ninth or tenth, he'll knock him out. But if he's not, and he's not on it, he'll get beat. So if I gave you ten pound and said, right, you're going to predict the outcome of Liam Williams and Khan Brook, um, as well as Williams Eubank, what would you? Uh, what, what, what do you mean? Just, like doing the accumulator two fights, how would you predict both fights to go down? I think Khan Brook will knock Khan out. That's a fact. And if, uh, Liam's one is 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 a 50-50 fight, isn't it? So, 
I'd love him to beat him and knock him out and stand and do all this. But if he's not on it, he'll get beat. OK. And just finishing off on yourself, Willie, what can the fans expect from the Hutch train in 2022? Please, Lord. Please, God. A massive year for me boxing and me health and to be happy again doing what I do. And beating up people! Yeah. Bobby! <laughs> the Sheffield Twang has come in. I just remembered, I've got to ask about your fellow traveller, Tyson Fury. Yeah. There's all sorts of talks going on, you know, money to step aside yeah. for AJ, 15 million has been branded. No one's about. beating him, really. None of them's no. beating him. Listen, they're not beating him at all. They're not beating Tyson. So if you're thinking about predicaments or anything, I don't believe none of them can beat him. In my eyes, he's the greatest heavyweight of all time. And I, I truly, a hundred million percent, the things that man's done and what he's... It's unbelievable. Sweet. Special, isn't he? He sure is. Willie, I'm going to leave it on that and hopefully I'm come back in a month or so's time and see where you're at and hope the six back will be... A hundred percent. And you start getting videos of me doing some pull-ups and stuff. Yeah, we'll do this interview topless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's right. do it. You take yeah. it, brother. Thank, Thank you very much. Time. Good.